it's been over a year since I made a beginner tips video for mini motorways, and it stood the test of time collecting nearly 250,000 views. But it's extraordinarily out of date, being posted weeks before the massive rework patch on August 24th, 2021, and several balance changes since then have occurred. I can't be happy with that video anymore, so I've made a new one, albeit a little bit more advanced. My credentials to be the expert, you ask? Well, I'm Retroflex. I'm a top 1% player on all maps, have 90 hours of play, and literally dozens of videos, and can basically top score on any map without issue. Except for Manila, but we don't talk about Manila here. With challenge mode now available, and expert mode right around the corner, what everyone needs now are the tips and tricks to go from beginner to a pro, like me. I've also included links below in the description, and cards in the corner if you want to jump into a video that highlights a specific technique, or want to see where the footage I'm using comes from. Past that, let's get into this. We'll start simple and talk roads in which case cardinal roads are typically the worst option. I did a deep dive into this specifically, but really it just comes down to trigonometry. A diagonal road is simply more efficient for travel. So if you have the option between a diagonal and two straight roads that reach the same point, take the diagonal. The drawback to this is that you'll have less opportunities to lay down segregated roadways across the map, as a deviation away from a cardinal direction of travel will always decrease opportunities in and along that axis. It's tough to explain, but it boils down to the restricted nature of highways, and any further restriction compounds greatly, especially once houses start spawning along the edges of your path. By curving a path, you force all other paths to curve, which will reduce the total number of travel options available. Maybe that's too meta, but I hope it does help. Next up is properly setting up flow into double destinations. Prior to the slipway change that I mentioned in August last year, I'd probably say that you should have all of your traffic flowing in from one side, since any interruption in that flow of that main highway was detrimental. Now, however, we've seen an increase in the traffic requests during surge periods and changes to slipways. The best option now is to equalize the traffic rate for each side of the destination. Why? We're looking to optimize for surge populations now, which happen around 1500 points and higher. Which means we can, one, assume that the cars will be entering random parking spots in the destination, solely based on the randomness that is generated from the opening and closing of available spots, and two, there will always be demand for cars until surge ends. At that point, we want to increase inflow to combat surge, with outflow being less concerning. Thus, bringing in an equal amount from each side is the best policy. The interesting implication of this is that you can then string a mixed set of colors into each side, since the thing that matters isn't the colors that are traveling anymore, just the amount of cars traveling into the destination. Roundabouts, that's another thing we need to talk about, because you can use them in your advanced strategies. I won't talk too much about them though, because there's an entire deep dive video on this subject as well. But in summary, you should clump all of your inputs directly clockwise of the destination's roundabout spoke. Mixing them creates too many opportunities for interruptions in your traffic flow and, because of how roundabout cars are queued, long lines of cars can get stuck at the inflow points. Since most of the time you're clumping colors together and then joining them into a roundabout, this means that you'll be starving one structure until the demand of another is sated, which might not come to pass if surge traffic demands all of one color. There is definitely a maximum throughput on roundabouts too, just because you've connected everything doesn't mean that you're going to survive. The introduction of the right-hand red rule for traffic lights was a revision made in August 2020 to help improve flow when using traffic lights at intersections. With the removal of automatic slipway merging, it's necessary now to use traffic lights to introduce any collector roads into the main arterial roads if you don't want slowdowns. For traffic lights, the orientation really does matter because you don't want traffic interrupted if possible. This is because traffic piles up in a snake-like fashion. If you haven't watched CGP Grey's video on traffic snakes, he has a good animation on exactly this concept. If a car decelerates abruptly, like what happens in many motorways, the resulting slowdown causes a domino effect for everyone else in that lane. If you're not setting up traffic lights to make use of the right-hand red mechanic, you'll cause these traffic buildups more often than necessary. The best way to implement traffic lights to connect collector roads is to have them at the intersection with the right-hand turn facing the direction of the destination. That way, there's no interruptions going to the destination and only a small potential for interruptions on their way back, as they'll have a green light to turn left back onto the collector road. Overcrowding is a thing too. Too many cars can actually do more harm than good to your traffic flow. Remember that at its core, this is a resource management game. So making sure that you're sending the correct amount of cars at a time is important. If you have too many cars being sent, especially during surge when they really just want to overwhelm you, you can cause traffic jams at intersections, which can then lead to a loss. What I tend to do is keep track of the following things. First, keep track of cars and garages, as this lets you know if you have enough cars to keep up with the demand of your current pip rate. If you still have two or three houses with cars, then there's absolutely no reason to connect another building to that line. It'll only cause surge, pulls, 
to grab cars from further and more destructive locations. It's much better to understand that a lower population with a shorter average travel time can satisfy the requirements of a destination, better than just saying, more houses good, me connect more and win more. Tangentially to this, it's better to have populations and motorways prepared for surge control, which I tend to refer in my videos as juicing a structure. In a perfect world, you'd have a roundabout set up near the destination point with one spoke being your main population roadway, and a second unconnected spoke ready to connect a spare motorway. And yes, bonus tip, you should always have a spare motorway if possible during the endgame score push period. I find it's almost never better to just permanently connect my last motorway. It's just much better to cycle it to all of the places that are currently surging. Anyways, what you can then do is connect more distant, unconnected groups to that unused spoke on your roundabout to instantly get a large surge of cars to a destination, after which you can then disconnect the motorway and cycle it again if needed. The massive surge can tip the scales for you and save you during a nasty surge, but I highly advise against keeping it connected for too long. Most roadway interconnects in this game have limits to their effectiveness, so maintaining a balance between sending as much population as possible and not clogging up the motorways makes this one of the more advanced techniques to implement effectively. What also comes from this as a corollary of sorts is that you do need to consider how far your population groups are from the destination. When cars reach the destination, they don't just magically teleport back to their homes. The distance that they travel to satisfy the destination still needs to be driven again, and that time where a new car can't be sent is a pip that can't be removed from the destination until that car completes the circuit again. For this reason, it's always better to try and link up closer population groups, and only connect distant ones if you start to fail. Because of the almost random nature of the car queuing and travel, a larger average distance between the source and destination is what will ultimately end your run, once surge population rush hour traffic begins and persists for longer and longer. Tip number eight, play enough to know the spawn masks for each map, and any expected next color spawns. This is a big one, but it only comes with a number of runs on each map. It is confirmed that there are designated color areas, or masks, that tell the game where each color can spawn its destinations and houses. That way, there is still variability between runs, but it's still consistent enough to strategize around. If you're really looking to reach that top 1% on a map, you'll need to learn where specific colors will spawn, and after a while, when. Do you have the resources to get through a mountain to connect a new color spawn? If not, consider blocking that off until the next week. These decisions are highlighted best in Wellington, especially the Wellington Challenge City video. Those little decisions will help push you past the resource deficient moments, where you have to try and get through the mountain without getting through the mountain. And finally, the most important of all the tips, watch my deep dive videos or playthroughs of each map. And yes, this one is a bit of a shameless plug, but sometimes learning is best done by reviewing content from someone with more experience and understanding than you. So yes, I'm shipping my own content, but there's a lot of hidden mechanics that you might not know about and might not realize for 20 or 30 hours of play, whereas instead you can watch an 8 minute deep dive video and understand it today. For example, do you know about the underlying pip growth mechanics or how the game decides where the next pip is going to spawn? Do you have troubles with small destinations ending your games prematurely? Do you know what surge population is? Do you know when surging occurs? and what effect it has on the pip growth? Did you know that the game ramps up in difficulty very quickly, around 1500 points? And do you know how that affects the pip growth rate? These are topics and discussions that I've covered in my deep dive videos, so I highly suggest watching expert content to learn the game better and faster. This isn't the 1990s, we have the internet, we might as well use it. Now, if you want to put your knowledge to the test, or maybe challenge a friend to beat your score on the friends leaderboard, this is your chance to get a free copy of the game on a platform of your choice. In the description below is a link to a survey that you can fill out with your platform of choice and region of choice, and an email address for me to contact you through. Sweepstakes will close on January 30th, and the winners will be announced publicly, via some name that you can provide me, on my social media pages before the end of that week. But those are the 10 tips, and we've reached the end of the video. If you're confused about anything or have suggestions for future videos, feel free to leave a comment. Also, we'll be diving into more challenge runs soon, more expert mode. Also, consider looking at other things on this channel. We have a Deathless Darkest Dungeon playthrough coming to completion, dozens of different games that fit any genre that you might like, and there's so much more on the horizon. If any of that tickles your fancy, consider subscribing. Shameless plugs out of the way though, thanks to everyone who took the time to watch this video, good luck to everyone in the giveaway and on the leaderboards, and I'll see you in the next one.